pest control guide home inspection requirements. That's our topic today and we're getting started right after this. Hi, I'm Kim Ward, real estate broker in San Diego, California, an expert with helping executors, administrators, and trustees with homes in probate or trust. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. That way you'll be notified of my weekly videos and you wouldn't want to miss any of them. So let's talk about pest control guide home inspection requirements. If you're in the process or considering selling a home, there's a very good chance that your buyer will make the sale contingent upon a home inspection and an inspection particularly for wood boring insects, termites. The inspector must evaluate accessible areas of the property where infestation could occur, such as the eaves, the attic, if there's a crawl space for signs of infestation. In addition, the inspector checks for visible damage to wood and other structural materials. The inspector does not have to inspect areas that are inaccessible or that have limited access, but the report will list areas that could be inspected. Areas that are difficult to inspect can be areas with personal property, which makes it difficult for the inspector to see behind, such as the garage where the seller is storing all the items they plan to move. Once the inspection is complete, a few days later, you and your realtor will receive the written report. I recommend when selling a home, you get a termite inspection prior to placing the house on the market. That way you will know what the dollar amount will be to provide a section one termite clearance to your buyer. You don't want to be surprised after you've already agreed to a purchase price. Quick story, I was helping Lisa to sell her home in Lakeside, it's a suburb of San Diego County, and she had a lot of wooden decks around her property. So I did what I always do and, and recommended we get that inspection by a pest control expert done prior to putting the house on the market. Well, that inspection report was shocking. It was $15,000. And so it was a good thing that Lisa knew that up front so that when we were looking at offers from buyers, she knew that was going to be an expense that would have to be paid prior to the close of escrow. Now keep in mind, $15,000 is unusual. It's typically around $2,500 to provide a termite clearance for your buyer. So what is fumigation? Tenting a house and using a fumigant is a highly effective way to control pests, especially termites that may have made their way deep into the corners of the home that can't be accessed any other way. So a professional exterminator installs a tent to cover the entire home and then floods that structure with poison gas that kills all the termites and any other pests. The gas, known as fumigant, even penetrates wood timbers where termites tend to hide. Termites don't usually congregate in small numbers. If you have a few termites, you probably have a great many, which is why a thorough extermination action is necessary. A licensed pest control professional will be able to tell you if your termite infestation is localized and can be treated with smaller applications or in most cases, fumigation will be necessary. They will also report any damage caused by termites, as well as any damage from fungus. So what are the steps? All doors, entryways are locked and warning signs are posted. Next, the fumigator seals off the structure entirely, either by sealing up all entrances and exits and enclosing it in a special nylon tent. A professional exterminator then pumps fumigant gas into the house. After a day or so, the fumigator airs out the house by opening up the seals. They will then test the air samples to determine if the air is safe for re-entry. The pest control professional will then allow residents back to the house. It's important you know that termites can survive a fumigant for as long as a week after receiving a lethal dose, so a few may still be around for the next few days after fumigation. Something to keep in mind is the fumigation will not eliminate subterranean termites as they require separate treatment since their nests are underground. Almost without exception, the tent installers will walk on your roof during the fumigation process. There is a wide variety of roofing and while shake and composition roofs are generally not a problem, 
most termite companies offer an insurance option to homeowners whose tile, slate, composite, or concrete roofing materials can pose problems. For an additional fee for an average size house, it's around $500 for the termite company to guarantee to replace or repair any materials damaged during the fumigation process. The broken or damaged tiles will be marked to clearly indicate those that were compromised prior to fumigation. The average cost of repairs and fumigation for a 1,800 square foot home is around $2,500. This does not include the roof insurance that would be an extra fee. Now, one of the steps that need to happen is that my team calls San Diego Gas and Electric and schedules them to come to the house and turn the gas off. We also schedule for them to come back after the tent has been removed and turn the gas back on. So once the repairs are complete, the fumigation is done, the termite clearance will be provided from the termite company completing the contingency in the purchase agreement and the expense can be paid out of the seller's net proceeds at the close of escrow. So that's a little bit of an overview about termites and tenting. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. I always love to answer your questions or to read your comments, so post those below. And thank you again and have a good week.